Hey everyone, um, my name is Britt. I work for the Pikes Peak Library District and Young Adult Services. And today I'm gonna to show you how to um, make a trivia quiz using Python. So this is gonna be the first of a two part series. So um, today I'm basically just gonna show you how to um, write the quiz and get folks to put in answers and then you're gonna give them feedback as to whether or not their answer is correct. And then in part two, we're gonna introduce some scoring and we'll make it so that the answers don't need to be case sensitive um, and we might add a few other things as well. So let's get started. Okay, so what this is, basically what we're gonna do today is we are going to, um, we're gonna learn some really basic Python stuff. Um, if you're like, how is this lady qualified to teach me Python? First of all, love your skepticism, keep that up. Um, second of all, I took a grad school class in it once. So I am in no way an expert. So I'm gonna do a lot of linking to people who are experts and like other tutorials and things like that. So there's essentially two ways to go through this class. You can just follow along with me, write your scripts, it's gonna be great. You're maybe not gonna like absorb as much about the concepts as, as you would if you go through those tutorials that I post. Um, so if you're serious about computer programming or you think maybe it's something you wanna do in the future as a career, I would go through the tutorials. If you're just kinda like, oh, I wanna give it a try, give it a try. So whichever way works the best for you, um, do that and let's get started. Okay, so before you do anything else, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to like download Python, right, so that you can actually use it. So um, I've got a link in the description um, to where you can go to download Python, so go ahead and do that. And then you're going to open up Python Idle, which is kind of just where you can... Um, write your scripts. So the first thing that you're going to do is um, the classic that everyone has to learn when they begin to code um, is to print, is to get the computer to say hello world. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called a built-in function in Python. I'm going to link to a list of those as well. We're going to be using a couple of those today. Um, and those are functions that you don't have to write yourself that um, Python has already basically written. So there's also something called syntax. So when we're putting in um, words or sentences, they go into something called like a string. And so we're gonna put those in um, quotation marks. Okay, so we're gonna say print hello world. Close quotation marks, close parentheses, enter. Ah, the computer said hello world. We just wrote our first line of code. So let's get started. Let's move on for real and go ahead and um, we're gonna open up a new file. <clears throat> so click file and then new file and then you'll see you get another little shell here. So um, what you're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save it. So you've got this, you're going to click save as click save, but it's fine. So um, you can see I've already done some Stranger Things trivia. So I'm going to do some more Stranger Things trivia. And then maybe I'll combine them and I'll have a really long quiz. Okay, so, um, but you can do whatever you want. So basically, you're going to need five questions and five right answers. It can be anything. So um, again, I'm going to just use Stranger Things trivia because I like Stranger Things and why not? So now we're actually gonna build our quiz. <clears throat> so the first thing that we need to do um, is create a variable. And the variable is gonna be our, um, it's gonna hold our answer. So variables are essentially just kind of empty containers that you can fill up with information. Um, again, I'm gonna link to a tutorial that explains what a variable is. So our first variable is gonna be the answer to the first question that we're asking. Um, so I'm gonna name it simply answer one. Um, when you're using variables, you can use, you know, it could be a number of different things, like it could be my answer. You do want to use camel case, which you can see the lowercase m in the capital, because um, you could say my answer one or my answer one. You can use a, um, a mixture of numbers and letters, and you can also use underscore, you know, so you could put your name, whatever, right? Um, I tend to, for a project like this, um, with five questions, answer one, answer two, answer three, answer four, answer five will be fine. Um, but if you wanna get creative with your variable naming, far be it from me to stop you. So we're gonna say answer one, and that's gonna be my variable. Again, you can name yours whatever you want, is gonna be equal to, sorry, we'll use two equal signs here in a minute. 
Um, and we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the variable with the person taking your quiz's answer. So we're gonna use another one of those built-in functions. This one's called input. Um, and so we're, again, we're gonna start another string with quotation marks and we'll say, what did Dustin name the polywog? And then we're gonna put polywog in quotes, but you'll notice I'm using single quotes because if I was using actual quotes, I'll show you what would happen. You can do that with the single and the actual quote. But yeah, when you use the uh, actual quote and then um, it will, because those were in quotes, then you see it's closed out. So that's kind of why we want to do that. So what did Dustin name the polywog um, that he found in the trash? Okay. And then, so you'll leave that. And then I would go ahead and go to run, run module make sure you've got it. Um, so you won't be able to see me testing um, essentially the way the screencasting software that I'm using works. You won't be able to see me testing it. Um, but what I would have you do is print the variable so that you can make sure that it works. And then when you test it, um, you'll kind of see. So I'll show you this one time and then I'm going to want you, um, the other times when I'm referring to testing, this is what I'm referring to. So essentially, if there is an issue, then we can go in and, and debug it. And debugging is what you call fixing scripts, basically. All right, so we are gonna say run module again, which saves it, and then let me show you what I am seeing. Okay, so um, here we go, now it's running again. You can see I've been playing around a little bit more, um, but I'm gonna try to type in an answer um, it doesn't need to be right or wrong. We're just basically when you say print and then we say answer one, it will show, it will essentially show us that the input function is working and that variable one has become our, um, the answer that they put in has become kind of the variable. Okay. Yep. Perfect. It's working. So whenever I'm telling you to test, that's what you're going to do. You're going to go to run, run the module, save, and then actually kind of use the quiz as you would if you were a random person using it and notice if there are any errors and if there are then you can go back in and fix um, the code. Now we're going to build the rest of the quiz. So um, we have tested that and it looked good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to give the user feedback as to whether or not their answer was correct or not. So we're going to use something called um, if statements, if else statements, which are a um, condi conditional logic statement. Um, and I'm gonna, again, link to a tutorial so you can learn how to use them. But essentially it's like, if this condition is the case, then do this thing, else do this other thing. And you can do else if, there's like a lot of different things you can do, um, but if you really wanna learn a little bit more about it, go check out that tutorial. So I'm gonna say, if answer one equals, and so you'll see the equals operator is a little different than what you're used to working with there. Um, so I will link again to the, the Python operators so you get an idea of what those are. For example, you know, sometimes it's not equal to or um, whatever. So um, they're a little different than probably what you're used to working with in math. So I am going to go ahead and um, link to those as well. So, but we're just going to be using equals today. So nice and simple. So if the answer one equals dart, because that is the correct answer, then, you don't actually say then, oh, and then I forgot a syntax thing because I like always forget this. You're gonna put a colon, you always have to put a colon after. I forget it like half the time. Um, and then so you'll see, and, the, and what triggered me to know was it didn't indent. So you see now it's indented automatically. Now. So I, now I know I did the right thing. All right, so now I'm gonna say um, if they're right, I'm just gonna say totally awesome. That's that, else, and I don't need to put anything else there because if it's not correct, we're just gonna give them an error message. Just say, do totally wrong. Totally is an 80 word, you guys, in case you did not know. Alrighty, so um, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna test this to make sure that it works. But again, you're not gonna see that, so you go ahead and test it. Um, and then come back and we will build the second one together and then I'm gonna have you do the last three on your own. So another kind of trick for organizing, and our, we're not really writing 
code that's long enough to really justify this, but it is a good thing to get in the habit of doing. Um, you can do something called commenting, and that's where you put in a hashtag. So if you have a hashtag then um, in front of something, then as, because essentially like the computer processes it from right to left and kind of goes from top to bottom. So if you have a hashtag, it just won't process anything, the rest of that line. So we're going to say hashtag, um, and that's why it's in red. So we're going to say hashtag question one, because this is just a way to organize it so that we can look at it a lot easier. So maybe like, let's say um, you're not testing as you go along. And then all of a sudden, you know, when you're testing, um, when you go back and you finish the whole thing and you're putting in answers, you notice there's something horribly wrong with question two. Well, this way you can really easily go back and find just the hashtag that says question two instead of trying to read lines and lines and lines and lines of script. So um, that's kind of why people will do that. So we're going to say hashtag question two, and then we're going to say answer two equals input. So another question might be what city did Eleven's sister, again with the fun quotation marks, live in? All right, and then we're going to use another if statement. So if answer two equals Chicago, then that is correct. And so I'm going to just keep printing the same stuff because I'm not feeling totally inspired, but I should probably write it correctly. So that's the other thing. Um, as you're going through, if you're like, whoops, I'm doing something totally wonky, just fix it. And then um, for the last three, I'm going to probably do a lot of copying and pasting. And you feel free to do the same. Ooh, do you see what I forgot? Anyone? Wait, no one's here. Okay. Um, so, colon. Again, I told you I forget that like constantly. Um, so else, we're going to print incorrect, whatever. All right. So those are our two questions. Um, so now you have a model to build your five questions. So I want you to go ahead and uh, maybe pause the video, write those five questions, and then come back here. I'm going to make sure to test them. Um, and then we're all we're going to do is we're going to put in some instructions and a closing mes message, and we'll be done building the first part of our trivia quiz. So hopefully you found it fairly simple to um, follow that format and write your other three or more questions. Um, you could certainly make this quiz longer if you want. Um, like I said, we're just going to put in some instructions. Um, and we're going to just, again, we're going to do that using the print function. So we're going to say, welcome to the Stranger Things quiz. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm going to type it today. Um, make sure to use proper nouns in your answers. I don't know if you noticed this when you were testing, but if you didn't type in exactly what you would put in for the variable, you got an incorrect answer. Even if the answer itself was correct, it was just in lowercase. Um, this is case sensitive. There's a way to make it not case sensitive, and that's what we're gonna learn in part two. That's one of the things we're gonna learn in part two. So, okay, cool. So now they have instructions, so they know what this is about. And then I'm just gonna print a, thanks for playing, bye. And then another sort of built-in function that you can use is just exit, and then it will exit the program for you. So that's it for today. Go ahead and save it and run it and try it yourself. Um, debug it. Um, see if in the meantime you can figure out how to keep score and how to make everything lowercase. Um, you might be able to figure that out using that W3 schools resource that I am constantly linking to for tutorials. Um, and then you can check back in a couple of weeks and we have our part two video to see if you did it correctly. So if you're up for that challenge, go for it. Otherwise, just meet me back here in a couple of weeks and I will show you how to trick out your quiz.